Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints. In this episode, I had the chance to talk to Robert Jacob Lerma, the barbecue photographer. He's an incredible photographer. He uh, lives a kind of a double life. Uh, we talk about that. He's a CEO at a at a hospital, so <laughs> and then he does the barbecue on the side, but it's like a full time thing. So he has essentially two full time jobs. I talked to him from Briscoe Ranch, uh, the Briscoe Ranch. Uh, barbecue cook-off which is in Uvalde, Texas. So we at first get the chance to meet some of the people that are there. There's Mo Quezon, there's uh, Ernest uh, Cervantes, there's, a bunch of, there's Fred, uh, there's some really really cool guys and uh, kind of a little behind the scenes thing before he does go into his history, his background. You'll find it fascinating how he got into photography and then how he moved back to Texas um, to live and then became passionate about going to barbecue joints and old barbecue joints and about the tradition and the, the personalities and the people behind barbecue. I, I know you're going to love this. It's, it's really interesting. And it's interesting to see how he went from not being a person in the barbecue world to now he is sponsored by Yeti. He's sponsored by Stetson. He's sponsored by a, num, a pit, pit maker, uh, Pitts. He's just on and on and on and he's he's uh, uh, contracted with different restaurants to shoot and it's just and when you see his photos you know they're photos from Robert uh, really think you're gonna love it and if you like what you see please subscribe to my channel because I'll be adding at least one per week uh, I really hope you love this thanks so much what is up uh, how, how are you doing how you doing that's Kevin right there nice to meet you Kevin nice, uh, nice so to you meet you catch me on a, on a busy day so you can kind of see me walk around Hey, perfect. And, and uh, probably know uh, Mo Kason. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Awesome. Who's this guy right here? Hey, what's up, Mo? Hey, hey, what's up? Who's that? That's Kevin. He's in LA. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, what's up, Mo? How you doing? Oh, he's making some compound butter. Look at him. Look how fancy he is. That is super fancy. Mo <laughs> Kason over here. <laughs> nice. See a little... All right, let me go. I'm going to go sit down. I just got... I'm in Uvalde, Texas right now. Okay, cool. About three hours from, from Austin. All right. And then you got all the tools of the trade. Oh, nice. <laughs> you got the, can you see that? Yeah, yeah. D850, that's my new baby. Uh, that's what I use for a lot of action shots. Okay. And then this is my my, my money maker right here, my uh, GFX Fuji. Okay. Can you see that? It's too close. No, that's perfect. No, it's. It, I can see it. Yeah. All right, so... So, so where exact where exactly are you? What festival is it again? Oh, the Crossroads is in Uvalde, Texas. Okay. Ernest says it's the oldest cook-off in America. Oh wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Have you ever been to it before? This is my first time. This is my first time. Uh, they they hired me to come out here. Oh cool, nice. So it's so yeah. you'll, you'll be there through Sunday. Uh, I'll be here actually until uh, tomorrow afternoon. Then I gotta go back and get into my. My uh, Bruce Wayne outfit and go play uh, CEO of my hospital for our Christmas party. <laughs> and then and then you're going back out to this, or are you just just gonna be here all day? No, th then I'll stay up there, and then uh, next week I'll have yeah. a work week, and then next week I'll be in Houston shooting some more, and then I'll pick up my barbecue pit. Um, I just got signed on as ambassador for Pit Maker, oh, nice. first non barbecue guy <laughs> on their team. That's so. huge. That's crazy. It looks like you're at the beach. <laughs> no, I'm I'm in my I'm at my home. This is just like a it's just a little thatch that yeah, I'm at the <laughs> I'm pretty far. I'm only thirty thirty miles from the ocean. Woodland Hills. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that little background you have going on right there. I like to make it so it's it's not so busy because I think it's I'd rather have your the background of the person I'm interviewing more interesting. Like that's really cool with the smoker back there. Yeah. Oh yeah. So <clears throat> give you a little tour. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That's a. Ernest is, uh, like he, he calls it La Ruca. Uh, that's one of his pits right there. That's what he does. Um, that's beautiful. What, hey, what does he cook on this? Brisket? Brisket. Pork butts and ribs. Pork butts and ribs. Nice. And then we're lighting up the burn barrels right here. Chicken, chicken and steaks. Chicken and steaks in here. Nice. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Oh, that's so cool. <clears throat> this is Eli, another guy of my squad. Hey, what's up? How you doing? Yeah, he's actually, he's actually another doctor, but he just got tired of medicine too. All he wants to do is barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> that looks really cool too, with the with the sun shining through. That's like a, a perfect. Yeah, well, well, you are talking to a photographer. I'm trying to be artistic. That's you are. 
<laughs> I will say that that was intentional, but that just happened to be there. Are you are you shooting this with the, with, with an iPhone? Yeah, this iPhone. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, move my move my hand. Let's flip it back around. Hold on, it got twisted a little bit. Okay. There we go. All right, so walking around. So again, this the other guys next door lighting up the pit pit maker. Okay. They're gonna, so this is a state competition tonight, and then tomorrow is a big competition. You can kind of see. Oh, cool. This is uh, about 200 teams here. Some other folks over here. And you got all over. That's a big cook-off. Yeah. Yeah, this is the, so this is the main barn right there. You can kind of see it. Uh-huh. And then the teams kind of wrap around that barn, too. Okay. Ah. That's going to be a fun night. All, yeah. So this area, you got all the all, all the... The big dogs. Uh, I don't know if you know Fred Robles. He mm -hmm. just won uh, Fred Robles. Yeah, yeah. I'm not friends with him, but I know of him. Yeah, so let's go see. So Moe's right there. He just rolled in from Iowa about an hour ago. <laughs> Mo. Mo is a personality. Yeah. So then Fred's over here. Let's see if he's in there. Say hi to Fred. Hey, Fred. How you doing? That's part, that's, that's part of the access, Kevin. He just knock on their door and open it. <laughs> you have all access. He may be naked. He may be lit. Uh -oh. Nice brisket. Look how pretty that is, Kevin. That's gorgeous. That's, yeah. that's beautiful. Is that Snake that? River? This is actually Oh, that's room. actually probably yours, right? It's a prime, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look how pretty that is, that Kevin. That's gorgeous. That's a beautiful shot. Thank you so much. Oh, that's You're killing welcome. me. <laughs> up close, look, at oh, look at the beard. Look at the beard. <laughs> that's my that's my first beard close up that I've had on this uh, interview yeah. series. <laughs> yeah, so, so we'll go back around. All right, so we'll go back, sit down. But yeah, it's just kind of a good time. I don't do a lot of I don't do a lot of competition, uh, cook offs. You know, to be quite honest, not really my thing. I don't mm -hmm. really think it's as fascinating as going to a lot of small towns and barbecue places um a lot of times it's just a, a dog and pony show to be <laughs> in my opinion uh -huh. but it's always a good time to hang out see everybody see my friends yeah to connect uh, and co kind of connect i mean uh you know they invited me to come here so it just happened to be a weekend i wasn't you know traveling uh, i was just, just in atlanta south carolina uh, charleston last weekend um or the weekend before, and then Houston, and then Dallas earlier in the week, and then uh, here this weekend, and then I got, uh, I haven't decided if I'm going to North Carolina next week. I got North Carolina and, and possibly Virginia. I just got off the phone uh, before I was talking to you. Uh, it was Tuffy. He wants me to go back out there to Virginia. Oh, cool. So it keeps me busy. Yeah, it does, definitely. You have probably the busiest schedule of almost anyone I've talked to, and it just seems... It, it's getting like you're turning down things because you can't do them all. Oh yeah, it's, that's exactly the case. That's exactly the case. Um, you know, and part of the ongoing debate is you know whether I do this full time uh, or I stick with you know trying to balance out my hospital job. You know, running a psychiatric hospital and then you know moonlighting as a photographer on the weekends. But you know, it'll get to the point where I'm saying more often than I'd like, which makes me a little. You know, I feel bad a lot, a lot of the time because, mm -hmm. you know, I like, you know, they appreciate the work. And at the same time, I like to help some of these folks out. Um, but, you know, there's only so much time in the day. So. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, how, how did you get into photography? I mean, you, you, you grew up in Los Angeles. I mean, um, northern northern uh, L.A. County or was it in Ventura County? Well, coincidentally, it's right there where the fires are going on right now. Okay. Um, let me just flip this around real quick. <clears throat> Probably better. Um, so, yeah, I grew up, my dad was military. My family's from South Texas. Okay. Um, my, my parents were born in uh, Brownsville and Corpus Christi. My dad was military. So we grew up in a uh, naval base, Ventura County, which is in between L.A. and Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. You're familiar. With oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, is it by in Oxnard or was it in or just a little north of Oxnard? So I went to high school. I was born in Oxnard. I went to high school in Oxnard. Okay. But I was uh, for the, for. A little bit of my youth, I was, I lived on the base in, in Wainimi and Point, Point oh, Magoo. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and then when my dad passed away when I was 11, we just stayed there. Okay. But we bounced back and forth between here and Texas, you know, when we were younger. Um, but like I said, when he passed away, we just we just stayed there. Uh, from a photography standpoint, I think, you know, I dabbled a little bit 
in high school, nothing serious. My first real foray into photography was my first job at the police department. Uh, I was 19, was working for uh, Port Orneum Police Department, and I was doing crime scene. Uh, I was a crime scene technician. Uh, oh, wow. Um, so they sent me to crime scene school to learn how to, you know, again, take pictures of crime scenes, autopsies, accidents. So that's when I really started to do photography. Um, nothing related to food. Um, but at the same time, getting down the basics. And then, Were you uh, develop it, developing your own film at the time, too? Was it old school? No, at that time, uh, it was kind of the, the first really uh, generation of digital photography. Okay. So I remember the first photo- camera I had at the, at the police department. It was a big camera. It might have been one or two megapixels. You take the floppy disks. <laughs> wow, floppy disks. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. How, that's how crazy it was. Um, so, yeah, let me move over here real quick. Uh, okay. So, yeah, I mean, so I, I did that for a little bit. And then, again, I didn't do any any food photography, any barbecue photography, nothing of that sort until we started really considering moving back to Texas. That's mm. So that, that started in uh, 05. It was the first time my, my, it was my girlfriend at the time, my wife now. We visited Austin, and we were just tourists. Okay. You know, we were, her parents were going to retire out to San Antonio. Um, I knew ultimately after I finished graduate school, I didn't want to be in, in California. So we flew into Austin drove around the whole state, really all central Texas. And I had a, uh, an old Texas monthly edition, I think from 90, <laughs> might've been 98, 99. Best, okay. you know, top 50. Uh huh. Yeah, I think it's 98 for some reason. I don't know why I think it's 98. Something like that. Yeah. And I also had a, a GQ magazine, which, which had talked about Louis Miller, Blacks. <laughs> I had that one too. I think I got that one. And Southside. So I didn't know about any of those things. You know, I grew up eating tri-tip for the most part. And then, you know, pretty much anything we can can get our hands on. I grew up pretty poor, so you know, it wasn't too common, uncommon to have whole heads, brains in my, my in my freezers, which was, is now you know bottom of go. But at the time, you know, I didn't know. Yeah, you know, yeah. I just, you know, that's what we had. So during that first trip, that's when I I, I went to Blacks, Louis Miller, Southside, and Smitty's, and I was pretty much taken aback by how cool they were. Um, I was using, I think, uh, you know, Cheats Cannon Elf I bought off Craigslist. <laughs> um, nothing real fancy. I didn't really know what I was doing. I just, you know, again, playing, playing tour sightseer, mm-hmm. you know, and the tour guide was my, the magazines. Um, and we would continue to visit. At, uh, but those are, icon- those are iconic locations that you went to. So they probably, you were blown away by the, the architecture and the, the ambiance. And- yeah, exactly. And so that's what I was kind of drawn to because, you know, in California, you know, there's not that type of history no. from a barbecue standpoint. Um, so, you know, for, from, from about 05 to 07, we would visit about once, at least once a year. And I would just continue to take pictures, you know, but I didn't share anything with anybody. Mm-hmm. I, I, didn't, I, didn't have twi- I didn't have Twitter. I didn't have Facebook. Uh, yeah, there's some more guys right there. Jay Tinney, some other guys. <laughs> That's so a lot funny. Of yeah. um, but again, just just kind of just messing around, and, and then we ultimately moved in, in 08, in 2008, in the summer. And at the time, my wife was still a vegetarian, so I was working for the sheriff's office, and I had odd days off. So I was like, I don't know anybody. What the fuck am I gonna do on my days off, which were Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday? Uh-huh. Well, I just started driving around the state by myself. Taking pictures. And still, that was 2008. That was just something fun to do, to get out of the house. And then uh, around 2013, somebody talked to me about Twitter. And they said, hey, you're in the barbecue. This would be a good, probably, uh, avenue to meet more people who are in the barbecue. For sure. So I started a Twitter account. Didn't know what I was doing. Didn't know what hashtags were. Didn't know if I was even doing it right. <laughs> but sure, started sharing my first pictures and started connecting with people. And about a month, maybe about a month and a half later, that was, I think, May of 13, Texas Monthly called me in June and said, hey, we're working on this uh, series, Photographer of the Month. Uh, we've never oh, done wow. it before. We, we, we would like you to lead off. And that was, I was talking to Daniel Vaughn. And, you know, I've known Daniel a little bit. 
he just got put in that role of, of editor. Mm -hmm. That was like, you know, I'm not a photographer. I was like, but your, your pictures are pretty good. I was like, well, it, for me, it made me a little uncomfortable. Because <laughs> I just thought it was just this fun thing to do, hobby. Now here I'm going to be exposed. And, you know, and, and you know, growing up as a kind of shy kid, I was like, what are they going to think? Of course. I, yeah. I get into my own head. But, you know, ultimately he, he kind of talked me into it. And sure enough, I think it was that July, July 13, I led that series off and, you know, Kind of the rest is history. I started, you know, getting more and more notice. I don't even have Twitter anymore. It's got for me annoying, but I just started, you know, connecting with people, meeting different different folks from different areas. Really started building my brand of what I well I didn't know at the time, but what you know, a style of photography, trying to tell stories, which uh, again led to some some pretty cool opportunities, you know, uh, with with some cool companies, Yeti, Stetson, Forty Four, Smithfield, a few other ones, and then. You know, being featured in some pretty well-known magazines. You know, I got uh, put as board president for Food Waste Texas. You know, That's lectures awesome. at Texas A and M. You know, here I am again, some guy who feels like he still doesn't belong in this <laughs> area, <clears throat> getting asked to go do all these things. It's pretty damn cool. No, it's really cool. So, at, at the same time, are you working at your hospital, or, or is that how is that how is that kind of like? Because this is you said this is two thousand eight, or was this two thousand? 2008 to 2010, I was at the sheriff's office. Okay. I was working in, in central booking, doing suicide risk evaluations. Oh wow! And then during the week, and then on the weekends or my weekdays off, I'd go, you know, do what I do. And then I moved from there to go to uh, Texas Department of Criminal Justice, overseeing contracts and and behavioral health within the prison system. I oversaw multiple um, high risk ad segregation units, uh, a lot of the mental health authorities in the state, and again, a lot of that is pretty boring to me so i had to do something to, st to stay relatively normal outside so again i i relied on my barbecue stuff and then i was recruited to come into the hospital area i mean my background is in law enforcement and you know for a time i was working as a stock worker with morgan stanley and then uh, my my education is in clinical psych so i kind of pulled all those all those fields together and i was recruited to come into my hospital and as originally director of business development, and then I was promoted to chief executive officer in April of last year. Oh wow! At 34, and still, you know, I was replacing somebody who was 65. <laughs> so some big shoes to feel. I and, and you know, he had been in, in healthcare longer than I've been alive. But for the most part, you know, we've done well at my hospital. So I balance out both. So your question was, how do I do both? So yeah, how do you? I get in pretty early at my hospital. I have a pretty solid team. You know, I, I never really leave. You know, my work comes with me, so I'm always aware of what's going on. We do inpatient psychiatry. So we're dealing with people on the worst day of their life, suicidal, homicidal, psychotic, depressive people. You know, I'm active on a number of boards in the community. People who see me my, on my life on Instagram or Facebook, most people don't know I have a day job. Which I, try and keep, I try and keep them separate. And You do a good job. I didn't know either. <laughs> yeah, I tell them this is what I do. Like, no, you're you're, you're fucking with me. How, you don't. What, when do you do this? You're everywhere. Well, yeah, I don't sleep a lot either. But I travel. I travel a lot. But you know, for the most part, they keep me around. I'm doing pretty well. And, and so, would you, what what barbecue joints did you shoot that first photo shoot for um, Texas Monthly? Do you remember what it was, or for the one for that no, uh, feature? No, no, I didn't. It wasn't a shoot. Uh, they they had me submit my what I thought was my my best pictures or oh. or picture that that you know kind of meant a lot to me so i submitted about eight pictures to them and some of the people that i submitted were are now deceased um which is pretty cool um so i submitted a lot of portraits which is i kind of like I, I prefer to do portraits but you know i understand you know people like the food aspect and and also buildings my i think my favorite part of photography is just kind of taking some real really cool portraits of people kind of trying to get them in, in their most authentic form as you would call it. Yeah, 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 for sure. Now, what? So, what were you shooting with at the at that time? Do you remember what camera you were using? Uh, uh, Nikon D thirty one hundred, which it was crazy when I think about it because I, I had buyer's remorse when I bought it. It was like four hundred bucks, uh, and I felt so guilty buying that camera. I, I was like, how am I going to tell my wife I just spent four hundred dollars on a camera? <laughs> which is kind of crazy when I think of it now. My, my there's like 30, 30 grand in equipment in my bag. Uh, and, you know, I, I think of how I started, you know, but at the time, 
you know, I always related to how I started playing golf. I, I, I started playing golf in high school with this cheap ass set from the seventies that I bought from a garage sale. Mm-hmm. And I got down the form, I got down to an eight handicap. And then once I got really good, I bought upgraded TaylorMade. So I, 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 is that what you would kind of recommend to people too that that are interested in getting to photography, especially food related photography or barbecue? Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any real reason to 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 go all in if you don't really have the feel down, the eye down. I mean, whether you're not, you have what I have now. It's not going to make up for you not understanding kind of the nuances for sure of photography. And I've seen really really quality stuff. And I mean, look back to the stuff I did early on. That was with a, a cheap camera. Yeah. yeah. Um, you just had so, a sense. You had a sense of it. Exactly. So, and then, and, you know, I have, I get a lot of these questions. Is that what kind of camera should I start off with? And they, they want to go all out. Is that you're using this? Should I get this? It's like, just because you're in the, have the means to get that. For sure. Does not mean you should get that. Um, get it down first. So I remember there's a, there's a, there's a person that I, I know in, in the area who, who went all in, spent like ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 on equipment. And then ultimately ended up selling it all. <laughs> it's a huge investment. It's a huge commitment. And, you know, you know, similar to any any type, whether it's a bar- fancy barbecue pit, you still got to know how to cook on it. Yeah, yeah. You may have great quality meat, but if you don't know what you're doing with that meat, I mean, whether it's Wagyu or, or utility select, if you don't know what you're doing, it's going to taste like shit. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't have the passion and you don't have the, the dedication, that's, that's also people probably just they think that taking a picture is easy, too, I bet. Yeah, and I can't even tell you how many times you know people come up to me early on and ask me, well, what was this ISO aperture shutter speed? I was like, you you might as well be speaking Russian to me. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> That's so <Yeah>. funny. <laughs> that sounds great. Beginning, I was literally just more trying to frame stuff. I wasn't so so much concerned about the technical stuff because I was more concerned about capturing moments trial and error and then i started you know really kind of <clears throat> speaking the language getting it down it just kind of just came to me similar to you know when i started typing without looking at the keyboard yeah yeah for sure and now it's a second nature exactly yeah so so what do you what do you for the rest for the starting of the year do you already have your whole like first quarter already planned out yeah normally i'm about six weeks out so uh i i i try and be as mindful of my, my family and my work. I have, you know, wife and three kids. Uh, but at the same time, I, I recognize that, you know, there's a lot of opportunities. For example, you know, in the last three months, I've been proposed to go to Sweden, Australia, Russia, uh, uh, Ireland, and Nepal. And, <laughs> and obviously, I can't go do those on the weekend. No. So I'm going to have to make a decision pretty soon. <laughs> do I... You know, maybe take a sabbatical and start doing more of these, or do I continue saying no? I can, I don't assume people are going to always ask me to continue to go if I can tell you tell them no. Yeah, yeah. So it's a tough situation. I mean, it's a good problem to have. Yeah. However, it's still a problem because I would love to go do all these, see all these places, shoot all these people that I've seen, you know, across the world. But the reality is, there's a, there's a time factor that doesn't allow me to do it on on the weekends. Are these all barbecue barbecue related trips? Yeah, but I mean, the one in Ireland, it's going to be uh, the World Butcher Championships. Oh. Russia is, uh, there's a guy I met who's into barbecue. He has a couple of restaurants who wants me to go out for a few of their big festivals in St. Petersburg, Sweden. Is it I Yohan? contribute to the book with, with Holy Smoke Barbecue. Yeah. I contribute on that book. Uh, Australia, it's with Meat Sock going to do some events out there. Uh, Nepal, that would be with Kamado Joe's. They want me to kind of capture uh, kind of the, how you eat going climbing everest oh that's so cool which is yeah so there's all these kind of cool opportunities that they you know they see what i'm doing and say hey some of them they pitch to me some of them they ask they talk to me about the location hey what do you think you could do here mm-hmm. you know recently i was i was contacted by food network and discovery channel about hosting a show travel show they're like pretty much would you want a camera crew following you around doing what you already do it's like <laughs> really thought about that <laughs> much. i don't know it's like inception it's like a camera crew following a camera like a camera print it's, it's yeah. kind of weird again because i never envisioned any of this happening because i just always thought this was something cool to do go see people you know and in their elements whether it's be a new place or i'm more drawn to places with history and the story small towns for sure um but, you know, I'm fortunate to have an audience that people pay attention to what I do. So I'm more mindful of, of what I share, what I post. 
uh, God forbid I post something that's terrible, I'm going to hear about it. <laughs> <laughs> do you hear about it? Uh, I, I, I do. They're like, oh, are you having a bad day? Or oh, what no. was that going on there? And, you know, as far as the style, you know, Tuffy was telling me about a style. It's like, I don't know. I don't know any of these things. But apparently I have a style. I have a, a way I go about. Which, again, uh, it's it's kind of cool because I'm so oblivious to a lot of these things that I'm doing already on my own. But, you know, people really just pay attention to. What was it like when the first sponsor came towards you? What was, who was the first person that came and said, hey, you know, I want to sponsor you? Because that's well, kind of unique, too, for a photographer. Yeah, I've been with Yeti and 44 for about four years. 44 Farms, huh? Yeah, 44 Farms and Yeti for about four years. I mean, they came to me early on to try and build up their, their you know, I remember when we started at 44, they were harvesting 20, 20 head a week, which is 50, which is well, 40 briskets. Wow. Which is, which is to, to, to like somebody like Aaron, Aaron's cooking over 100 briskets, nothing, small potatoes. <laughs> you know, now they're up to, you know, 200 briskets. Now they're on, you know, uh, a uh, billion dollar buyer with Tillman, you know, they have so much exposure. I mean, this is a quality product and I'm very fortunate to, to have them back me from early on. That's fantastic. Uh, one of my favorite places in the world is to go to that ranch. And then same thing with, with Yeti. And, um, you know, I always hear all these, you know, there's all these competitors coming to the market now, but you know, there's a loyalty mm. to, I have the Yeti. I mean, whether somebody wants to pitch me more money, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Yeti all day, every day. Cause they've been, behind me since day one they're an amazing company they're just super smart and savvy and just uh down to earth it feels like they're true to their brand and to their to their oh. cl- the people that they're catering towards yeah exactly and you know i live maybe five miles from the yeti headquarters so i'm pretty fortunate to be able to pop in in and out you know me and my wife were looking for new houses we she always jokes with me you know we need a three four car garage just for my yeti stuff <laughs> But if you look at my garage, I have pretty much every cooler that they make. I mean, I have to have them on stock just so I can, in, in the event they want a picture of this or a picture of that. For sure. But it's always kind of funny when people, you come to my house or my UPS driver thinks I'm a drug dealer because he's always <laughs> making Yeti deliveries <laughs> or something. He's like, what do you do? I'm You're like, smuggling oh, stuff in Yeti. <laughs> yeah. So it's pretty cool. And you said Stetson and uh, the eyewear. What's the eyewear company? Skeleton Optics, okay. uh, another, another brand that just started off uh, by a uh, Marine Corps veteran named Mark Lano. He's out of uh, Florida. You know, they're trying to break into the barbecue world, but, you know, I, I think they have a solid product that is designed in, in America, made in Italy, using Zeiss lenses, oh. hunting and, and camera lenses um, that really protect the eyes when you're looking at that uh, high UV light in the, in the barbecue pits. Oh, that's great. Um, I, you know, playing around with them, some of their lenses showing them some of my friends and they seem to enjoy them. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Another one, I also, you know, represent uh, Carpenter watches, uh, handmade watches out of Brooklyn, Neil Carpenter, good guy. Um, again, I just signed on with Pit Maker. I'll pick up my new pit next week. And then uh, I'm on retainer in a number of different restaurants across the, across the state. So when they need content or pictures, they give me a holler and I come down and shoot their stuff. Oh, that's so great. What a, like, it's like, who would have thought that just... From from the beginning, from your passion in barbecue, turned into this. This is uh, I'm I'm so proud of you. That's just so killer. It's so awesome. Oh yeah, I I never like envisioned any of this happening, but here, here I am now. Now considering, do I leave my high dollar CEO job yeah. to go do photography? And on paper, that sounds like a crazy proposition. Mm-hmm. But when I talk, you know, some of the people know what I get paid to do it. It's I'm I'm blessed. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, that's so cool, and it's I, I, I so appreciate you taking the time because you are easily the busiest person, the hardest person to get a hold of to just to get some time because you're you're always going from one place to the other. So I and and your work it, it does stand out. You can definitely tell that it's a it's work from Robert Lerma for sure, without a doubt. I appreciate I appreciate that because I do. Um, it does mean a lot when I hear compliments or people recognize me or they want to meet me. You know, I was judging out and. and at an event in Houston last weekend, here I am, uh, flanked between Allison Cook, multiple James Beard Award winners, and 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 uh, Pat Sharp, food critic from Texas oh, yeah. Monthly, and Wayne Miller next to me, and then there's another bar guy, and then there's me, and I'm here like, what am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you belong there now. You do. With yeah, but to have you know Allison Cook tell me a story about a picture 
that I took at City Market in Luling resonate with her, which made her cry. It reminded her of a time when she was a young kid, her grandfather taking her to a barbecue place. These are the stories that people that I admire or all these barbecue people admire on their level respect the work that I do. Whoa. And I recently just started calling it work because for the most part, I was just, I didn't consider it work because it was just something fun. But, you know, uh, now so I understand the value behind what I do and the impact I have on this world. And I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty blessed to have the access I have oh, yeah. to be able to go into, you know, whether any place in Texas or to when I was in, you know, Atlanta last weekend or a few weekends ago, I went to Bees Cracklin. Mm-hmm. I didn't tell Brian I was coming. I just showed up and I talked to the person. And he's like, no, Brian just left. So I was like, oh, that's cool. So they asked me my name. I said the name. But I proceed to go sit down and order. And I'm sitting down and all of a sudden I get a bunch of text messages that he's on his way back. <laughs> and then he came from the other side of Atlanta. Oh, man. And he get, oh, man. You're the you're on my list. If anybody comes to my place, I have to come back. <laughs> and then he shows me his text messages of all, all these people who saw me check into his place saying, Robert's at your place. You better get back there. Are you kidding me? Wow, that's so cool. Yeah, from, from Elliot Moss, from Buxton Hall texting. Uh, oh, really? Oh, that's crazy. People in Atlanta and, and across the country saying, hey, I'm at, he's at your place. You better get back there. See, that's what, and that, that, I've never, I never want to be that guy who go, I treat it like I'm an extension of their house. For sure. Respectful. I'm not going to be a diva or demanding. I'm, I'm never that guy. And so I get in trouble a lot of the times because they say, you never told me you're king. It's like, I'm not going to go in here and say, hey, I'm Robert. And I'm here. <laughs> give me, give me extra brisket. <laughs> I mean, I, that, I think that's an obnoxious person. I would never want to be that guy. Oh, for sure. No, that's. But also, too, it just it just shows that your your pictures are resonating with people, and in turn, it's yeah. it's it's a powerful thing to have a photo from you. It, it definitely, I've there's places that I've seen like like uh, Beast Crackling that I want to go to now simply because of the photos I saw that you post on Instagram. Yeah, he's actually coming next week. I'm hosting him in Austin. Oh, cool. He's gonna be staying with me, take him around around the city. Same thing I did with Trudy when, when Bert was starting out. Trudy's underground. Yeah, yeah. Um, last, or actually this February I took him around. Um, you know, I try and play tour guide when people come to Texas. People who I, I, I feel are, you know, probably the next big thing or have that same passion. You know, it's always cool to show them around what we're doing here. Oh, that's they, so great. You know, take bits and pieces back to where they go and, you know, maybe they're inspired a little different. You know, same thing I did with Matt Horn few weeks ago from san jose horn barbecue oh yeah, yeah he drove he drove all the way from san jose to come stay at my house and t- tour texas with me oh that's that great yeah he, his stuff weekend. looks great yeah he went with me to so uh, I, I was shooting james beer dinners that weekend then i went to some uh whole hog uh, dinners out of some farms then i took him to uh the texas monthly barbecue festival so he had a whirlwind experience. oh what a what a treat that's amazing that's really fantastic <laughs> yeah. Wow, I'm super jealous. Well, I'd like to at least uh, see you for a lunch when I come out for sure. I would. Uh... Well, you give me a holler. You know my number. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'd be honored to spend some time with you. And it'd just be it'd just be cool to be a fly on the wall and see kind of what you do, but also just going around to barbecue places. I I love that more than anything. I love and I I love the history of ever of all the old and I love seeing the pits. I love seeing the wood piles. I'm a, I'm a addicted to seeing wood piles. There's something wrong with me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you give me hold, then you can kind of see it in action. Okay. You know, it's interesting to, to hear people talk about it when I'm doing it, but, you know, I understand. From, from what I gather now, I, I, I'm more aware of tying in my day job, you know, building relations, building rapport, talking to people, psychology, being able to cultivate those relationships in the barbecue world where they're able to relax and yeah. not pay attention to the camera in their face. That's great. That's so perfect. You have a lot more authentic imagery oh yeah and that's and all marrying the two, two worlds oh that's awesome well thank you so much robert and have a have fun tonight and uh that's killer i'll definitely be following you and i'll, I'll shoot you this over once i i get it edited and put online but thank you so much for your time and thank you for doing what you're doing i i'm a huge fan and just for, on all levels i really i respect what you're doing you're very welcome kevin i apologize it took so long to get together hopefully we can see more of these excellent i'll see you soon all right take care all right, kevin. Have, have a great Bye. weekend